Hello my friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I want to do a soul tribe reading right away this morning. Good morning whenever you're finding this video. I wanted to do one yesterday and my day just kind of took over and all day I felt like something was missing so of course I wanted to come hang out with my soul tribe. I may or may not leave comments open on this one. I'm still mulling that over. Um, this is going to be a soul tribe reading so I'm going to explain what happened there. Someone just hit me below the belt, you know? It just, they hit me in the gut in a place where I feel very insecure. And it it was about my communication skills and my reading skills. And, you know, they compared me to a fourth grade, like I have the reading comprehension of a fourth grader. And it just made me really, it just hit me below the belt because that's somewhere where I, I only recently found out that I'm dyslexic. I didn't know. I went through my entire life not knowing I was dyslexic. Blah. And so that is clearly I'm, I'm reflecting on this. I'm taking that as I still have insecurities that I need to work on when it comes to those things. But I just want to say that just because I appear to have the reading comprehension of a fourth grader, I actually have a higher reading comprehension than that. But communicating it verbally, um, anyway, it just, you know, it hurt me. And they said, I don't mean any hate, but shouldn't we talk about how this reader should stop reading out of a book? Because clearly they have the comprehension the reading comprehension of a fourth grader and um it looks like they're like shouldn't we address there might be a learning disability there thank you very much i know that i have a learning disability <laughs> anyway it's clearly something i still struggle with and feel self-conscious about but i want to say to that person Yes, I am well aware that I have a learning disability and I am well aware that I'm autistic and I have problems communicating, but that doesn't make me any less of a human. And why can't I try and read out of a book? Who says I'm not allowed, you know? Who says that just because you're not good at something, you can't do it? Anyway, oh, that eclipse. Gosh darn you, eclipse and the intense emotions and reactions. <laughs> anyway, I really enjoy talking with you guys in the comment section, and I was having a lot of fun getting to know you, but that comment just hit me where it hurt, and clearly I still have insecurities that I'm working through, but I just want to say that that mentality that... Uh, that just because you're not good at something, <sighs> anyway, I'm, I just want to tell anybody who struggles with reading and communicating, it doesn't mean you have to be quiet for the rest of your life. <sighs> anyway, geez. All right, let's move on. <laughs> So anyway, that is why my comment section is now closed for a while because people, the judgments they were making about me just got, I just don't understand it. Like my friends are saying in the comment section, I'm here to spread love and light and help people heal. Why are you critiquing my voice and the way I laugh and all that other stuff? So I just, you know, I knew it was getting to me and... I was repeating a cycle of, I'd see a bad comment, I would work through it, I'm f I'd am say, I'm fine, I'm healing, I'm growing, but it would still upset me. So after it happening like 10 times, I thought this is a cycle that I need to break <laughs> and I need to turn off my comment section while I, you know. Anyway, that's why my comment section is closed and yeah. But anyway... <laughs> My ego monster is telling me to start this video over, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Why can't we talk about it when we feel hurt or vulnerable? Why can't we share that? You know, it's, 
when I hear people say, don't cry, like, don't cry about that, or they're telling their kid, stop crying, or, you know, it just, why? Crying is a way to release that and deal with it anyway. <laughs> Let's get into it, my friends. I hope you're doing well. I have been putting off opening my Patreon to you people <laughs> um, because of my ego monster. And last night I finally opened it. So thank you to those of you who have joined. I'm really excited. I spent all morning trying to figure out how to work the community chat thing. And I just, you know, just like that commenter punched me in the gut about how I feel stupid. <laughs> I feel pretty stupid that I can't, I hate saying that that I can't figure out how to get this community chat thing working. And I was looking at the directions. I just, anyway, I've asked my partner to help me later today. So he's going to help me figure out how to get that community chat working. All right, I need to roll up my sleeves here. So I missed you guys yesterday. I really did. And I've missed seeing your comments. Thank you to those who are still commenting on my quotes that I post. Not my quotes. <laughs> nah. It is an eclipse today, so you might be finding the energy very intense. You may be feeling very emotional. You may be feeling very reactive. You may be crying all over the internet. <laughs> oh no, wait, that's me. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day, whatever you're doing. Like I said, if you're driving home from work or going to sleep or working, nothing to see here. This person is working. They're not listening to tarot. <laughs> nothing to see. Keep moving. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to cut the deck in half here. We have the lizard on the bottom. So we're gonna look at the lizard and then we're gonna get three more cards. That's the plan. And I'm gonna read out of the book. <laughs> Even though I struggle. All right, lizard. Eighty-three. 11. Interesting. 11. We're almost in Mercury in retrograde, my people. Which means more communication problems. Yay! Um, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> it also means, you know, hearing from people from your past. So... We have Lizard here on page 83, and it says, repeating a cycle, unlearned lessons. So I'm going to read it, and you take it as it resonates, my friend. I just think it's interesting because I was just talking about a lesson where I thought I was learning the lesson, I thought I was growing, but really I had to turn off my comment section <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Lizards are often associated with the idea of regeneration as they can regrow their tail should something happen to it. This indeed is a handy trick, enabling the lizard to not only get a major part of its body back, but also do better the next time around. When lizard energy is present, we too are being offered this gift. This card is also an invitation to take a moment and ask yourself why this cycle is recurrent. Lessons have a way of repeating themselves time and time again until we learn and integrate them. It may take us a few times to even recognize the common thread between situations, but once we do, we are presented with a choice. Learn, grow, evolve, do better, be better, or don't. And this same lesson will circle back around soon enough. If this card has arrived in your reading, it's likely that at this moment, the latter has been true for a while. Consider especially the other cards around the lizard. What do they reveal about the crossroads where you're standing in at this moment? Um, 
Very interesting. Right underneath, we have the gazelle and we have separation, walking away endings. So I think that's really interesting because you could be someone who realized that there was a cycle repeating and you walked away um, and had an ending or are in separation. You could be someone in separation who is really looking at all your cycles like I just talked about how we've been talking about lately reflecting on our own patterns and how important it is for our own growth. Um, anyway, interesting. Whatever that means to you. All right. So let's go. We're going to get three cards. So we'll, we'll just see what comes out. What do we need to know today, Spirit? What do we need to know today? What do we need to know? <laughs> Pigeon, that is so weird. <laughs> I know you guys don't understand what I'm talking about. But the only time I looked at the card when I cut the deck was because at the pigeon. Like the all the times I cut the deck and shuffled it while I was talking, the only card I glanced at was the pigeon because, you know, I saw a seagull this morning. <laughs> anyway, let's look up the pigeon. Pigeon, pigeon, pigeon. 16 tower moment perhaps perhaps there was a tower moment 16 magician energy lovers energy spiritual awareness knowing your way back home the present moment oh my gosh i love it <laughs> let's read it i have chills let's read it so maybe you just learned some cycles that you've been repeating and you've had some Spiritual ascension, you know? What comes to mind when you think of a pigeon? Your gut reaction may be silly. May be a silly, if not ditzy, bird. Despite this unflattering reputation, these birds have also been used to deliver messages, signals, and other life-saving information through, throughout history. Their use is recorded as early as 3,000 years ago in ancient Rome. If the pigeon has graced you with its presence, now is the time to practice mindful awareness. Ground yourself into the present moment. Notice the space around you, its sights, its smells. Notice how you feel emotionally and how you feel physically. As you take in the details around you, what new information emerges? Practice the same exercise for the situation that called you to use this deck in the first place. Alternatively, consider the idea that only the only time that the only time is the present moment. We live in a society full of distractions. Grounding yourself into your body, your constant home, will bring you back into the present moment where clarity exists. Remember that people will forever judge you by your actions and not your intentions. It may be time to check in with both and ask yourself if the two are aligned. If not, why? What do you need to do to ensure that both are communicating the same thing? I'm just going to call this out. Remember that people will forever judge you by your actions and not your intentions. It may be, for me, I, this is not referring to the haters in my comment section. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know, for some of you, I'm feeling past energy with this. I'm feeling a tower moment or a lot of solitude where I just, I don't know, I feel like this is in the past, this energy for some of you um, regarding, you know, awakening spiritually and maybe this is, that was the start of your journey. Um, interesting. It goes on to page 17, so star energy healing. It also messages, signals, and other life-saving information throughout history. Like I said, this could be where you're, unless you're here right now, where you're becoming more spiritually aware of the things going on around you, the synchronicities, the way the universe communicates with you, 
Um, yeah. All right, let's keep going, my friends. We have cub and boar. So I don't know, I don't think I've ever gotten this cub card in the whole time I've had this deck. Cub. Sixty-nine. Hmm. Oh my. Sixty-nine is a counterpart number. A lover's connection. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I want to take boar. I'm gonna put boar off to the side. I'm feeling this cup card. A lover's connection that's meant to help you grow and evolve into your higher selves. And we see these two dragonflies here. My people, two dragonflies. Sixty-nine. If anyone wants to know what this deck is, it's this deck, the Oracle of Pluto. The inner child. So, for example, you could have met a counterpart or went through some sort of spiritual awakening and you could have attracted in someone who was meant to be part of your journey in healing your childhood trauma because this talks about the inner child. Um, I can't help but think of, you know, counterparts are very, they connect on an inner child level. They trigger each other's childhood wounds. Um, there is, counterparts talk about this energy of feeling very childlike and young when they're interacting with their counterpart, if that makes sense. A companion to the bear card, the cub represents the cuter, younger half of this furry duo. It also represents the one who is being protected rather than the protector. Although the cub card by itself is a call to get in touch with your inner child, if you've pulled mom and baby in tandem, it's important to take note of who is playing each role in your current situation. It may also represent the duality that exists within all of us. Where do you play the role of the protector and where do you need more love, protection and nurturing? Emperor, Empress energy, the balancing of both those energies. The inner child is an interesting and elusive concept. There are plenty of us who grew up a little too fast due to circumstances outside our control. Perhaps real life asked us to take on more responsibility than was appropriate for a child. Maybe we fell into a caretaking role too early, or our family dynamics didn't create a safe environment for our inner child to grow, blossom, and flourish. However, just because we feel out of touch with the inner child doesn't mean that they aren't there. Now is the time to get in touch with the little you in a big way. Yes, this is what I'm always telling you guys to do to connect with your inner children. <laughs> I'm always like, do things you did when you were a kid. Watch the movies you loved as a kid. Dive right back into Disney. <laughs> Watch Brother Bear. <laughs> um, think, back, think back to what you did for fun as a child. If you draw a blank, maybe it would help to think about... What you, would, what you would have done had the opportunity been there. Do that now. Release judgment of yourself and tell your inner child how proud of them you are. If the thought of being silly and talking to your inner child feels uncomfortable, you'll know you're on the right track. Yay! Children are constantly full of wonder and awe. When everything is new, everything is magical and special. And... When you learn to receive the messages from the universe and heal your inner child, it does become magical and fun. And that's the real reason I'm laughing all the time. Not because I'm insecure, you haters. <laughs> anyway. When was the last time you felt childlike wonder welling up inside of you? When was the last time you did something for the first time? 
Carve out a time in the next few days to try something new and allow the inner joy and excitement of the unknown to bring you back to life. Yay! <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. That's what we've been talking about. I feel like this is the path that, you know, my soul tribe is on right now. And when you find that inner spirit, life, inner child, life can be magical. You know, I used to be, I used to feel like I could never feel happy. I would never know what it felt like to feel loved. I would never know what it felt like to have a community. I would never know what it felt like to have self-confidence. I, I was sure I was always going to be depressed and anxious and hate myself and be unhappy because that was my entire life from a very young age. And when you do this healing journey, and especially if you're into the magic of it, the synchronicities, I never imagined how life could be. Like I never imagined how beautiful life could be. Very symbolic of the butter or the butterfly, the dragonfly. Last year I had a dragonfly land on me and it was the most magical thing ever. <laughs> And it, it would leave and it would come back and land on me. And I just felt I was really vibing with the universe, you know. Um, anyway, if you have bugs that land on you or animals approaching you, um, even your own pets, you know, that's a good thing. Anyway, it got to the point where there was like a spider crawling on me once. And I was like, okay, you do you, spider. <laughs> like, I just, I didn't freak out. <laughs> Anyway, beautiful energy. I feel like we're looking at past, present. Um, let me just look. I kind of feel like the boar came out for a reason. So it might, it might not resonate with some of you, but I feel like I have to... I feel like I have to read it for a reason because it did show itself. The destroyer self-sabotage. Interesting. Very interesting. That's Five of Swords energy, you know, self-sabotage. Um, those are hard lessons to learn. How you self-sabotage things, how you self-sabotage relationships, yourself, your own success. Um, so that could be something you're reflecting on or you could be dealing with someone in that energy. We have the boar. Wild boars are, <laughs> I keep thinking of the Lion King. We've got the cub, we've got the boar. <laughs> Is the boar not Pumbaa? <laughs> are you aching? Yep, yep, yep. For some bacon. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> anyway, they live in large groups all over the world and are incredibly strong and trample down trees and bushes to create paths for traveling and hunting. Boars can be extremely aggressive when provoked. Oh my gosh, it's like a Taurus. <laughs> you poke the Taurus too much. <laughs> um, boars can be extremely aggressive when provoked, leaving a trail of destruction in their paths. If the boar card appears in a reading, you are in the realm of the destroyer. Despite the negative connotations associated with the ar archetype of the destroyer, this energy isn't inherently a bad thing. Think of the adage, destruction is a form of creation. Very often to be able to build something new, whatever has been taking up space must first be leveled to the ground. Change is brought about by the destruction of outdated systems. Revolutions are triggered by the immediate need for a complete overhaul. Something in your life is begging for this very uprising. However, we must also recognize the propensity for this energy to be harmful to both ourselves and others around us. Are you destroying to create something better or are you sabotaging something good because it feels scary or uncomfortable? Radical change is born through radical honesty. And dragonflies go through a radical change when they go from being underneath the surface to being born into or evolving into the dragonfly above the surface. Radical change from water to air. Um, I'm just going to use myself as an example here. This boar card speaks to me because 
in my connections when I feel backed into a corner and triggered. I I do this, I do the bore, I just I destruction, clear the way, I'm out of here. Um and it's taken me so long to realize that. It's so like this card said, it's so hard to look at yourself and admit that and see that and how it has affected and hurt the people around you. Um, very interesting. It also reminds me of the card the other day we had with the mythology cards and we saw the the feminine in the boat with following the flame. <clears throat> so, inner child healing, we have reflecting on our self-sabotaging behaviors. How do you self-sabotage? Remember my reading the other day when I spoke about how I was feeling hurt and vulnerable and I took it out on my partner? And then recognizing that. I just want to look at that one more time. I'm just going to read this. It's on page 55, which is Wheel of Fortune Energy. Um, and I, I think of, you know, karmic lessons. In astrology, we look to Pluto as both the destroyer and the creator. The intensity of undergoing a Plutonian cycle is first felt through the metaphorical death of something old, toxic, or threadbare. As much as, as, much as we may struggle through the pain of this death, the destruction is inevitable. We can run, but we can't hide. Eventually, Pluto catches up with us and demands that we let go of the things that have been long since weighing us down. Resistance is futile. Oh my gosh, is that the, is that Borg? Is that the Borg from Star Trek? Is that what I'm thinking of? Resistance is futile. <laughs> am I, am I imagining that? Anyway, I'm, I'm going to leave my comment section open for this one and I'll just delete any haters. <laughs> Resistance is futile. <laughs> and by doing this, we only make the process harder on ourselves. Uranus is also the planet of radical change in astrology. Through Uranian cycles happen, though Uranian cycles happen, happen seemingly overnight. Research of the myths of both these energies, which one feels relevant now? Interesting. This reminds me of like karmic lessons. You can run, but you can't hide. They will catch up with you. Karmic lessons, the wheel of fortune. Anyway, let's get one last card. I'm going to look at future energy, maybe. We'll see. Future energy, let's go. What do we need to know about future energy? Future energy, please, spirit. We have the swan. <laughs> Growing into your higher self. Beautiful. Ah. <laughs> we have shadow person. Interesting. We have swan and shadow person. I'm. Mm, this should be interesting. Mm, shadow person. I don't know if I've ever gotten that card. Shadow person 51, which equals six. Lover's energy. What did I say it was? 51. <laughs> I immediately start going into numerology and then it falls out of my brain. The unrecognized self. All right. This entire deck is devoted to the journey of becoming acquainted with the unrecognized self, the part of us that feels ever elusive, slipping in and out of the shadows, difficult to pin down and ever have a real conversation with. However, if the shadow person happens to pop up in your pull, 
you have the fleeting luck of doing just that. Your unrecognized self has arrived to have an honest conversation with you. Whatever inner work you've been doing has thrust a level of self-awareness upon you. Yes! <laughs> Spiritual ascension! <laughs> you've been looking at your shadows. You've been doing the work. You've been baby-stepping. <laughs> um, and your shadow is ready for integration. It can be difficult to know the steps. This is future energy! The steps when we reach this point in our journey, sometimes just knowing those qualities exist can feel like enough, and maybe it is. Take this opportunity to ask this side of yourself what it wants, what it needs, where it would like to live now. How can you rectify the resistance and make, a, and make peace with its demands? Remember that this is the real part of your essence. Show yourself compassion and understanding instead of shame or guilt. We all have pieces of ourselves that struggle to fit. Uh -huh, I love that. And you guys, it's on page 51, Hierophant Energy, Learning Your Spiritual Lessons. And then, you, you know, Manifestation Magician Energy. It also ends on page 52, Chariot Energy, Forward Motion. So we see this, we do see this, ascension here um this rising up of you where it's just beautiful it is beautiful and now we have the swan so let's have a look at that 64 10 wheel of fortune <laughs> oh <laughs> you guys I have goosebumpies. <laughs> Soulmates, a special connection with someone else. Lover's energy, emperor energy, someone coming in. <laughs> because you've integrated your shadow self. Beautiful. The swan is a bird revered for its beauty and grace. They are ra a rather rare sight in many parts of the world. And there is something extraordinary about seeing a pair of elegant swans together. Just as the swans wait to find the perfect match, knowing they will mate for life, this card is an affirmation that you've found yourself a truly special connection. This is future energy when you're, when you evolve from your lower self into your highest self, and then we have this coming in. Nah. <laughs> because you found your inner child or you're working on it, and you've realized your inner shadows and the way you self-sabotage, you're working on it. <laughs> you will forever be working on it, my friend. <laughs> but here's where you learn how to forgive yourself. And you know what? Once you forgive yourself, it makes it so much easier to admit those things about yourself and deal with them. And anyway, beautiful. There's something more profound about the energy between you where love and deep understanding just seem to flow. Keep in mind, this connection may not be romantic, so it may be a friend. Whoever this person that comes to mind as you read this description, that's the relationship the swan is pointing to. Perhaps this relationship is a big focus in your life right now, or maybe it needs to be a bigger one. Reach out to this person, spend time in their company, and share what's in your heart. Allow the ease and flow of understanding, love, compassion, and deep nurturing to nourish your soul. It may also be that they need the same energy from you now. Offer up a listening ear and share your deep gratitude for their presence in your life. Beautiful. This, listen to this, a common misconception regarding soulmates is that these relationships are meant to be lifelong. Sometimes that is true, but sometimes a soulmate is meant to come into your life, teach you something big, and then leave. It is important to be able to discern which relationships are which and know when it's time to let them go. This card, however, is about the soulmates who are meant to stay. Often these relationships are a love that has nothing to do with romance. It could be an important friend, family member, or other close to loved one. And it's on page, it finishes on page 65, which is 11. And lover's energy and hierophant energy. 
I feel like for a lot of you, it's love here. You know, I can't ignore the counterpart energy that I'm picking up on, but I can also see how this could be a family member after you have maybe, or a friend, you know, after you've healed and realized things about yourself and maybe how the ending of that connection came about on your side. Um, I'm, I'm going to let you take it as it resonates. This is future energy. And I'm not sure if you realize something about yourself and think, you know what, I was in the wrong. I'm going to reach out to this person and see how they're doing. Um, or if this person is reaching out to you, you're going to have to listen to your higher self. We'll look at tarot. Um, you know, sadly, some of us hit this point and we want to reach out to that old friend or family member, but we're blocked, so we can't. Um, and in that sense, that's when you kind of have to forgive yourself and them and kind of release it um, and see if it comes back, you know? But anyway, we definitely have a connection here, a lifelong connection. That's what the card said. This card points to one of the ones that's a lifelong connection or, you know, a deep soul lasting connection that you haven't been able to release counterpart <laughs> anyway I need to wipe my nose oh my goodness what cards do I want to get now I think I'll get these ones let's just cut the deck and see what happens we have the page of fire page of wands perhaps spiritual awakening. Um, that's also can be someone or you taking action. Maybe you're blocked. <laughs> Seven of fire. Anyway, let's see what I want to look at this person. We have the high priestess here. High priestess. So it could be a very telepathic connection, uh, intuitive connection. Could be high priestess, something could be about to be revealed about this connection now that you've, or when you integrate your own shadow. We have the eight of earth. That's very symbolic of a connection that you choose, like two, it can be symbolic of two people who choose a soul connection, even though it's hard work, they choose to invest in it. And I'm not talking about investing in a toxic relationship. I'm talking about investing in a soul connection. I hope this is recording. I just had a thought like, imagine if my, <laughs> if my whole three of air, three of swords, so it does seem like someone you're in separation with. Or perhaps someone you had a deep wound with that you've learned to heal on your side. We have the Queen of Swords. So you could have, someone could have put up a boundary here. You could have put up a boundary with someone. Um, Queen of Swords is also about knowing your authentic truth, like knowing your truth, knowing your value, knowing your worth. It can be a bit of a colder energy. So perhaps you have been, you know, perhaps you put boundaries up with this person or they could have put boundaries up with you. It's interesting as I'm doing this reading, I'm thinking of for some of you, I am thinking of a friend, um, but again, for a lot of you, it's going to be love. So let's see, we'll go past energy here. We have strength, so an unbreakable bond. Um, could be someone that triggered your ego or you triggered theirs. It could be a counterpart connection here with the strength card, a connection that brings out the worst side of you, but also the softest side of you. And there could have been, you know, there could have been a lot of pride that caused tower moments in this. The fact that it's falling under the pigeon also makes me think of 
you strengthening your relationship with communicating with your intuition with the pigeon card. But anyway, you guys look at this. Oh my gosh, we have counterpart energy on the bottom. So we have the Queen of Air and the King of Air, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And that's showing a very strong bond between possible counterparts here. Doesn't matter if you have that sign or not. Um, this shows perhaps there were struggles in communication here. There could have been, you know, coldness within this connection when there were clashing perspectives I'm hearing. Interesting. Let's go current energy. We have the two of fire. So the two of fire for current energy between you and this person shows, looking at it from the bigger picture, the giraffe, it shows, you know, the two of wands can be about how until you change your approach or break a pattern or, you know, make a change, you can't move forward to the three of wands. So current energy, I feel like you're looking at patterns and your approach to this as is this swan person, whoever that is to you. For some of you, that swan person could be someone that you don't even know yet. It could be that you and this person are living very similar healing journeys right now and you're both reflecting, you're both, you don't even know each other and you're both reflecting, healing shadows healing and energetically you're coming you know you're drawing this person in three of fire <laughs> what was i just saying in order to get to the three of wands you have to go through this two of fire stage um so you know i am seeing two people whether you know this person or not whether it's a friend counterpart or a soulmate that you have not met yet you're both looking at your patterns and how to grow and move forward so that you can go to this three of fire. And then the three of fire leads into the four of wands. Anyway, let's see near future energy. We have the fool and the queen of air. So we have, we do have an energy exchange coming up where this person or you takes a leap of faith towards this. Um, again, I'm not telling you to reach out to this person. If this, if you know this person, you know, I'll use my mom as an example again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks mom. I love you. <laughs> um, When I was going through this, when I got here, I felt called to reach out to my mom. And, you know, it didn't go well. I was ready to complete the cycle, but she wasn't. Um, I'm not sure if I had waited. I'm not going to think about what if, but I just want you to follow your intuition because if you contact, if you know this person and... If you contact them, it's possible that you'll you'll disrupt. Like if they're further behind on the healing journey, they'll disrupt their growth. Um, I don't want to say that for certain. I'm actually going to ask what action you should take towards this person. And I'll ask what action they're going to take towards you. That way we know, okay? Anyway, we do have someone taking a leap of faith. And we have the Queen of Swords, um, and that shows speaking your truth, your authentic truth. So we see honesty. There could be, you know, someone coming towards you here taking a leap of faith. Let's see how... I want to see one more for near future energy. We have the Messenger of Fire, Eight of Wands. See, we have communication. We definitely have communication here. I just don't know who's communicating. All right. What can you tell me about this person coming in spirit? Who is this person? We have the seven of earth and the 10 of air. So definitely seven of earth. Seven of Pentacles feels like you already know this person for some of you. 
and that you had an ending with them, Ten of Air. Whoever this is seems to need your healing energy, need your support, is what I'm hearing with that swan card. Because the swan card talks about you reaching out to someone and helping them. Um, I don't like the way you're looking at the swan, you. <laughs> So seven of earth, ten of air, six of water, reconnection. So for a lot of you, it's a soulmate here, or it's a counterpart, or it's an ex, six of cups. Um, this person wanting to reconnect with you, someone that you put pentacles into, or that sounds weird. Um, someone that you planted pentacles with. Like I said, it could even be a friendship, you know, where you evolved a friendship. And then something happened and there was an ending. Perhaps egos got involved. And there was some kind of ending. Let's see how this person is feeling about you. How is this person feeling about you? We have the high priestess. So they feel intuitively drawn to you. They could be thinking about you a lot. Um, they could be seeing a lot of things that remind them of you. Interesting. This person may want to reveal something to you as well. I'm just going to get one more on that. We have the Eight of Earth. So this person is feeling like it's time to come in with that other pentacle. Seven of Pentacles, you've already been working on this. We also have the star on the bottom, so wish fulfillment. Choosing. Remember I said it's about... This card can be about two people who choose to work on a soul connection, even though it's hard. Um, yeah, we have star on the bottom. So wish fulfillment. This person feels drawn to you, needing your energy, your healing energy, not like an energy vampire kind of situation. <laughs> All right, let's see what this person's intentions are. We have, interesting, the tower. So the tower shows, wasn't one of these tower energy, it might have been that one or that one, I can't remember. Um, the tower can represent this person wanting to, you know, have a new, I'm going to get one more, have a new, start building a new foundation or start rebuilding the foundation that was already built, Seven of Earth. This also shows a foundational shift in this person. This person showing you that, you know, they've had a foundational shift in the way they look at things here. I'm going to get one more for the tower. Intentions. We have five of air. It's funny, when I was thinking of the tower, I was thinking destruction, and I was looking at that boar thinking maybe they're, you know, doing what the boar did, which is... Remember it talked about self-sabotage? Anyway, we have the five of air. So this person seems to want to show you how two of cups, five of air, how they self-sabotage this. And maybe why, you know, maybe this person wants to show you that they've had a foundational shift in the way they view their own cycles and patterns, just like we were talking about here. It could be that, you know, you and this person are mirroring and this person is going through the exact same thing, but, you know, needing support. Let's see what this person's next actions will be. Well, that came out very quickly. I want to ask another one. There we go. Messenger of Earth. So we have, that's interesting. We have five of water hanged man. We have this person coming in with a new perspective. Um, this person, I feel like they're communicating how how their perspective changed during separation, you know, how this regret, this sadness 
it's interesting. Your person is coming out with a lot of fives, which is symbolic of change. So they've had a change of heart here. Messenger of Earth. I should know what that is. But I don't. And I don't care. <laughs> Messenger of Earth. Oh no, where are you? Okay, so Messenger is the Knight. So we have the Knight of Pentacles. So this person slowly coming in. This is someone who's coming in determined with the Messenger of Earth, Knight of Pentacles. They are determined to change here is what I'm seeing. What do we need to know about this person? What do we need to know about this person? We have the Nine of Earth. So this is someone who has been working on their own stability and their own growth. This is someone who's been working on self-improvement. We also have the Ten of Earth. So this is someone who's coming in very stable, wanting long-term stability. Possibly someone very loyal. You know, we see the wolf there. What does this person want you to know, whoever this person is? Three of Earth, that they want to work this out. Look at this. We have three, three on the bottom. I said, what does this person want you to know? They want to work this out with you, three of Pentacles. They want to see if you guys can collaborate again, if you can connect again. The Empress energy shows them wanting to nurture this, showing them being drawn back to you. The it's a mm. <laughs> what <sighs> that's the emperor you guys i'm telling you counterpart connections i'm seeing two people coming back together to see if you can work it out three of earth lovers holy Oh my gosh, after the tests, after the trials, look. And the emperor is the lion. And we see this empress embracing the lion here, lover's energy. Um, you know, for some of you, this is just, this can be someone taking action towards you. I'm seeing this person taking action towards you, the emperor. And the empress and the lover what <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be the picture for the reading right there that one right there <laughs> working it out three of pentacles beautiful you guys um all right well that's gonna be the cover picture there i want to see what action you should take towards this person what action should you take towards this person? What action should you take towards this person? This is interesting. We have the Ace of Earth, the Seven of Air, and the Seventeen, the Star. And I'm, I am hearing if, if you guys are feeling called to communicate with this person, by all means, your intuition, your higher self knows. Just make sure it's not your ego. Make sure you're not contacting them out of fear of them slipping away or things like that. I am hearing a very clear message to kind of let this grow. To not, remember I said, sometimes you can stop a person's growth if you check on that pentacle too soon i talk about like wiggling the pentacle to see if it's growing like pulling it out are you growing roots yet no okay i'm gonna stick you back in and then it takes even longer for that pentacle to take root and i am seeing there's this energy of you holding back seven of swords this doesn't mean manipulating this person this means we see this person wearing a mask and i'm hearing let it grow let this let this grow I'm also seeing this very masculine energy here. So I do feel, let that grow. 
I do feel like this person's coming towards you. Seven of air is the energy of holding back, holding your cards back. We also have star, you know, believing, keeping the hope alive, believing in this, um, allowing the healing to happen and allowing stars to align in the right time is what I'm hearing. So there we go. Um, let's get, let's just get some number cards. That's always fun. <laughs> Actually, let's get these ones too. Oh, it's a three, three, three. <laughs> you are being called upon to use your spiritual gifts as a light worker, assisting all of humanity. Live your truths and be a positive light to others so you could be one of my light workers. I love you. <laughs> Let's see. We have 25. You have a great ability to take in and process information, both conscious on both conscious and subconscious levels. Your curiosity is endless and your desire to dive deep into a variety of subjects will bring you an immense awareness of the world. I am intelligent. And just because I sound like a fourth grader, <laughs> I am intelligent. You know, for far too long, we've been told to be intelligent means to be book smart. And that's a bunch of crap. 10-10, <laughs> I looked at the clock at 10-10. My dogs are barking. Confirmation. <laughs> Keep your thoughts positive and be patient as everything is working out for your highest good. Trust that your angels are working behind the scenes to help you. I am patient. Oh my gosh, we have a 10. <laughs> I am enjoying it. Oh my gosh, see? I know the word in my head, but when I try and read it, there's a disconnect because anyway, <laughs> you have great leadership skills. Your mind is sharp and allows you to dream up ingenious. Is that it? I don't know. I had to turn my comment section off so I can't have access to my word fairy, <laughs> my friend that helps me. Um, ideas and organize all the details, then direct others how to carry things out. 10. Beautiful. One, you are a self-starter with a very innovative, very innovative ways of creating opportunity. Your determination and endurance are powerful and will help you get through rough times and reach success. Magician energy. Yay. <laughs> All right, and then we'll get the other number ones. There we go. So that came off the top reward. Ah! What do we need to know? What do we need to know, Spirit? We have release and playfulness and awaken on the bottom 11. So 11. Discovering your true self, spiritual awakening within yourself, recognizing and accepting your gut feelings, seeking your life's purpose. The pigeon. <laughs> And then we have 88, success and prosperity ahead, manifestation of rewards for your hard work, a green light to continue your current path, check in on where you're placing your energy. This beauty is quite the blessing. Do a quick vibe check. Where are you investing your energies and attention? Where you place your focus is the area in which you'll be seeing incredible growth and abundance. It's all connected and it loops back around. You'll be seeing an increase in wealth if you put in the work, whether that's on a material level level or a more spiritual scale. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Try again. Don't give up. Making Christmas. Reflecting on your journey so far, lessons learned, transformation, fresh opportunities on the horizon, being a positive force, 
in the lives of others. And I think it's so interesting how this is aligning with these cards. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Spiritual awakening, reflecting and releasing, playfulness, whatever that is. <laughs> Maybe you're 39. I'm 39. Remember that endings are also beginnings. When a cycle comes to a close, take some time to do a bit of soul searching. Hindsight allows you to see the past with greater clarity. Let go of who you used to be. Ditch those past patterns that no longer serve you. It's time to evolve into a new leveled up version of yourself. Yay! Integration! Remember, do you see? Do you see the magic? <laughs> you can use your newfound wisdom to help yourself find a better path forward and be an advocate for those who need it. When one door closes, another opens. You get to choose how you walk through it. And either you open the door and walk through it or you sabotage it and blow through it like that. What was it? Four? <laughs> anyway, 39, 39. 39, 39. Ugh. Where are you? 39. <laughs> There you go. Take a breath. Yay! <laughs> You're in transitional energy. Look, past, present, future. I'm telling you. Take a breath. Happiness and warmth are surrounding you and bringing confirmation that you've recently made the right choice. Feel free to express yourself and get a little playful with life. Let that burden slide off your shoulders. Things are about to start feeling a bit lighter and fun. Encouraging transitional energy, feeling confident in a recent decision, comfort and happiness are flooding in a period of great happiness, future energy. Yay! <laughs> anyway, you guys, thank you for joining me for a Soul Tribe reading. I am going to go do a Patreon reading now. I love you guys, and I will talk to you soon, and I will see you later. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!